Hi everybody, I'm Steve Plage and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, the Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every edition, uh, we highlight a, a nonprofit in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing wonderful, wonderful work. We have with us again, and we're very fortunate to have O'Neill C. Odyssey back with us again, and Tracy Weiss, who is the executive director there. And we're going to be talking about all the great things that they do. Tracy, welcome. Yeah, Steve, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Absolutely. For folks who don't know much about uh, you, and of course, you're relatively new in your role there as executive director, tell people a little bit about yourself and your background and how you kind of came to being the executive director for uh, O'Neill Sea Odyssey. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I am so excited to be here and to have a chance to live and work here in the Santa Cruz community because there's nothing more iconic than, you know, the O'Neill Sea Odyssey program. Um, as somebody who didn't necessarily grow up here, I've lived in this community and have heard about the Sea Odyssey for years, and I'm just so honored to have be able to join and lead this team. Um, so a little bit about me. My most recent experiences, I had been working at the Elkhorn Slough Foundation. Oh, and basically, really? Yeah, my career is basically working at the intersection of youth and the environment. Um, I jokingly say, you know, my mission is to basically figure out how do we get more kids outside and to get them connected and caring about the world around us. Um, so my most of my experience is working in nonprofits. I feel very deeply that nonprofits are doing work to serve our larger society. You know, we know that there are such great needs in our world. And I see again and again how nonprofits are stepping up, stepping in and filling those very critical roles. So prior to joining here, I worked at the SLU and I had a chance to lead another nonprofit called Exploring New Horizons, where mm -hmm. I basically served as the executive director there for another outdoor school. So, you know, I'm all about taking away the four walls of a classroom and watching the magic that occurs when kids get outside. Because we see time and time again, right, when we talk about Richard Louvre and just nature in the woods and even just the past pandemic, we know that when kids get outside, that they get excited, they get connected, and they get um, the knowledge that they get just in Trent, like kind of sinks in on a very different level, you know, opposed to reading what's in a book, you get to see it, feel it and see it all kind of come to fruition. So it's that magic that really keeps me going. Well, that's wonderful. And you certainly have a wealth of experience. And, you know, you need it as executive director of O'Neill Sea Odyssey. Of course, you're following the footsteps of Dan Haefeli uh, himself an iconic uh, figure in Santa Cruz with all the things that he's done. And of course, Jack and Jack O'Neill, who famously said, the sea is alive. We have to take care of it. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you're you're stepping into and kind of stewarding that. It's interesting. Uh, uh, I am a great believer in getting uh, children involved and kids outside. I'm a sanctuary steward for Save Our Shores and the the, the beach and, and river cleanups that I've led, the most enjoyable have always been with school-aged children. And you yeah. get them out and they're just, you know, they're alive and they're engaged and they're wanting to be protectors of this wonderful, you know, Santa, Santa Cruz area and uh, Santa, the, the Marine Sanctuary. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful work. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, about Jack. I think it's worth, you know, reflecting on on his work and kind of how he really put this together and got us really where we are today in terms of being able to provide a lot of the awareness that the, the children and the general public have about, you know, protecting the marine sanctuary and the ocean. Absolutely. You know, Jack was a visionary. He saw a need. And, you know, for those that actually spend all of our time out in the water, you know, you see all the little changes, right? What happens in our ocean and the seasons of our ocean. And you saw people come in and that's how he originally created the wetsuit. He saw people were cold and he started thinking, how can I do this better? And similarly, he saw that, you know, who was out in the water was not necessarily representative of who lived in this community. 
you know, and he had such a love of the ocean, you know, and of his, you know, all of the boats and the toys that he had that he wanted to share that. And like you said, Steve, he knew that the ocean is alive. Yeah. And those people that are going to be taking care of it are those people that are the youth of this generation. And so we needed to really create a program um, that is going to inspire, that is going to connect, and is going to activate the next generation of stewards. You know, we use this living classroom on our 65 foot catamaran right. to get kids out on the water because again there is nothing like you know you could talk about it we can learn lessons about it and we still do that but when you get the kids out on the boat in the harbor there's nothing better so again from jack's legacy we've really been able to inspire and try and connect those communities that would not otherwise be able to access our coasts and oceans um, with this experience. It's, it's ironic, right? We think about living in this rich environmental ecosystem. You know, we have redwoods, we have this ocean. And again and again, every week, we see students that come that have never been to the beach, that have never been out on the water. And we see that they just light up and they get so excited. And from an environmental standpoint, we know that what's happening upstream, upriver, is mm -hmm. impacting here our ocean. So we're really trying to create connection, right? We want students to understand a sense of place and a sense of ownership of this natural environment that we call our backyard. And it's a legacy that is inspired and connected to over 100,000 students, which is Absolutely. a phenomenal number of young minds and people who have been connected with the ocean through this program. So uh, kudos to uh, Jack and to yourselves and all your staff, people who continue you know, to, to make sure this legacy is ongoing and we live out, live out the dream that, that was Jack's. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about the virtual part of your programming. Uh, it's fascinating. I looked at your website. Uh, this is just a tremendous program. You know this, uh, and I want to make sure that I get the name right. It is your, and I'm paging through this for your goals and curriculum, but uh, it's your distance learning program. That's just fantastic. Right. Tell right. Us, so tell during the that. pandemic, we couldn't get kids outside, right. you know, and so so many people in our community have been able to be out and to experience the Sea Odyssey program again and again. When I'm out in the community, I hear what a rite of passage this has been for so, so many. Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, we couldn't get kids out. So um, while I was not a part of it, I am grateful for the team that pivoted so quickly to be able to build and create a distance learning program where we basically brought the Sea Odyssey program to the students in the classroom, you know, utilizing Zoom and the tools that were developed so quickly. We reached not only the kids of Santa Cruz and Monterey, but we were reaching students throughout California with our really? virtual program. Because we know, again, not everyone can has the privilege or the opportunity to take a day field trip here to the beach. So it really allowed us, and we saw such a huge increase of uh, the number of students that took advantage of this program. So we were able to bring in knot tying lessons and lessons about marine mammals. And we talked about currents and tides, and we talked about tide pool adaptations and what was going to go in there. And so we piloted this amazing program. And we're really now, while we're going back to our traditional program, are working to kind of figure out how do we integrate the virtual learning into our day-to-day -day, um, activities and bring it into our regular set of program offerings. I want to make sure that people are aware that they can certainly uh, donate to O'Neill Sea Odyssey. Uh, I'm sure there's a link to that on the website. Uh, and also they can volunteer, as I understand it. Uh, uh, when your predecessors that I've talked to um, offered to have me out for like a half a day or a whole day or something going through, you know, just a real tour, tour uh, a total immersion kind of thing. I was just fascinated by the opportunities there are for people who want to be involved in this to actually do that. Absolutely. The offer still stands, Steve. We would love to have oh, you. Thank you so much. Book. I may yet be able to find out. Take me up. Come on, come on out. We would love to have you. I mean, so yeah, to please, I, we welcome. So the, the beautiful part about the Sea Odyssey is that it is for the community and it is by the community. Our community supports this experience. It is a hundred percent free for the students that participate in the program. 
And what that means is how do they earn, they are selected, um, teachers apply to participate in the spring, mm -hmm. and then they receive curriculum to help prepare the students. They really mirrors kind of the learning cycle, right? And how students earn their experiences by participating in a stewardship experience after their field trip with us. Mm -hmm. It's a way for them to really apply the lessons that they've learned during their field trip and to really kind of start to build on that cycle of education, right? So it's not just reading, it's doing, and then it's applying and really thinking. So it gives students a chance to take those lessons and to bring it back to their home and their school community more so. And so for the parents who will be watching uh, this show, and it is uh, uh, on, it'll be evergreen, it will run it several different times over the year, we're going to run it on our playlist very soon, uh, starting within uh, a couple of days of, of, of this taping. Uh, what can parents uh, expect uh, their children to be uh, to be involved with as they move through uh, uh, before they get onto the boat, uh, is there some training that's going to take place to kind of prepare them to be on the catamaran and then they move through various stages of this? So the catamaran is incredibly safe. So there's not a lot of training about the boat itself. But uh -huh. what we really try and do is front load students with some baseline knowledge, with the vocabulary and the awareness of what they're going to be experiencing out on the boat. And then once they're there, we rotate students through three different stations. They focus on marine ecology, marine biology, and then navigation. And so uh -huh. while they're there on the boat, they rotate through those three stations and they go and they collect information and they collect data so that when they then dock and they come back to our shoreside education center here at the Santa Cruz Harbor, we then take that knowledge that they've just collected out in the water and we process it. So they go out in the, at the marine biology station, they're collecting plankton. And when they get back to the seaside station, they get a chance to really look at that water sample under a microscope and see what sort of um, phytoplankton, zooplankton are currently here in our waters. And then we talk about it. We talk about the food webs and the food chains that, you know, um, they might not otherwise have awareness of, you know, when they're there on the boat, they take some navigation readings, they plot, and then they come back and they plot it and they get to see where they are. So it's not just plugging it into their computer. They're really taking the time to do the math and the science and to look at the data, which is all in alignment with the new next generation science standards. So we're really building on that for sure. Well, I've learned something uh, myself just looking at your website in preparation for our, our time together. I had forgotten about zooplankton and phytoplankton and things like that. I mean, how important all these things are and what a huge part they play in the Monterey Bay Marine Sanctuary and all the things that we do. Now, how long uh, is the program for a student to kind of from start to finish when they move through it? Is it just it's about three days? hours. Yeah. So we run about two classes every day. Oh, really? So, you know, during the school year, we run about 200 classes every year. Wow. Um, and we really work to support, you know, and invite classes from Santa Cruz, Monterey, Santa Clara County to apply to participate. And we're really working with um, funders to make sure this opportunity is as widely available as possible. Um, but again, we're really working to make sure this program is uh, equitable and available to those communities of need. So we're really looking for and trying to serve um, classes that represent, you know, high minority students, students that have high and free and reduced lunch, and just trying to make sure that um, without any other support that, you know, they have this opportunity to get outside. And it's wonderful that you're sensitive to and have an appreciation for uh, the social diversity that we have, uh, mm -hmm. not only in Santa Cruz, but in our region. And I, I think it's important to make available a wonderful, wonderful program like this to as many kids as possible uh, in all walks of life. Absolutely. And it's interesting because you talked a little bit about, you know, a few years ago, we celebrated our 100,000 student campaign. Exactly. And now we've reached over 117. Oh, my. Because, so, you know, it continues to grow and expand. And even with the virtual distance learning, we were able to reach students, you know, and our geographic, you know, range expands as well. So not just reaching here, but reaching students throughout California. We know that our oceans are going to play a critical role in um, the fight against climate change going forward. And so this is really a 
monumental program to make sure that students are aware and understand their role in impacting that. And again, it is, as you mentioned, a community-based program. It is of the community, by the community, and, and for the community. So folks who want to volunteer, folks who want to donate, and we always urge people, if they've got an extra couple of bucks, to, to send it off to a, a group like uh, Neil Sea Odyssey doing such great work. Um, now, you have uh, local teachers. Uh, they submit uh, a project uh, proposal to, to you for the distance learning, and that's kind of how this gets started. So they submit an application to get, you know, to participate in the program and to get scheduled for a class. We typically will open that application up in the spring. So we're working to schedule schools now. And then part of that application, our teachers are asked to participate or to work with students to plan a student action project. Again, that's kind of the stewardship or the conservation component of this program that after they get to come out into the field with us, they get a chance to apply that knowledge with a student action project. And we've seen so many different projects through the years, whether that be a recycled art project, um, a civics project where they write letters to local leaders, maybe they do a trash pickup on campus or around their community, mm -hmm. maybe they plant a school garden. But there are all ways that they are now taking those that information and they are applying it in their home communities. And we're working to collect that information over time. And we just see again and again. So um, the Sea Odyssey has been around for over 24 years. And so we've done a long term study of our students and what kind of knowledge that they're retaining over time. And we're seeing students not only increase their knowledge, but the indicators of the change in their behaviors is is high as well. So we're they're expressing that they're willing to talk to friends and family about what they see. They're saying that they understand where the water now is flowing. So all of that together shows that this program is making large changes to the students at a really critical moment, moment in their kind of de development, both not only academically, but social and emotionally as well. And you, of course, you mentioned that they're collecting data, you know, they're actually, they're being analytical about this and being able to see some measurables in this. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think they're creating memories, right? So sometimes we know in the field, right, we're hoping that we're giving them all sorts of information, but at the end of the day, they're going to remember the feeling, they're going to remember the excitement of being out on, you know, on the boat. Um, we have so many kids like, you know, one of some of my favorites, you know, stories are the kids that have not been out here before. Um, and they just kind of squeal with excitement when they're out and watching them walk down the plank and, or down the plank. Okay. Down the dock. <laughs> hey, let's not hope we don't make any students walk the plank. Let's be That's wonderful. Goodness gracious. Yeah. But when you get them out on the boat, they just wide eyed and be like, I have no idea that this boat was so big or how are we not going to sink? And it's really empowering to the students and our community. And I really know uh, what you're talking about. As I said, uh, I was a sanctuary steward and a sanctuary steward with State of Our Shores. And just the wonder of, of, of kids being out and, and appreciating, you know, being able to look at or be on actually physically the Armada Bay Marine Sanctuary and having a aware, generate awareness of that is really the beauty of programs like, uh, like yours. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as uh, the pandemic uh, reduces a bit, as we kind of move from summer into fall, uh, kind of what's uh, what's what's going on now with uh, uh, O'Neill's Marina Sea Odyssey that is maybe going to change a little bit as we move forward into the future. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, so not we're really excited to one. I mean, it's funny because we're almost excited, more excited to be returning to what we did before. So we're really in the midst of planning and preparing to kick off our. Um, fall program, which will start up in September. And uh, you mentioned volunteering, and that is something that we're really excited about is finding new ways for people to connect and engage with the Sea Odyssey program. So we're really looking to add more volunteers to our day-to-day -day program, both on the boat and here in the office. We're always looking for other support, um, you know, to make sure the program continues to operate efficiently and smoothly. Um, and we're also going to be looking for people that are experts in the field, whether you're an education expert or a marine science expert. And we're really looking to um, develop a committee of people to help us assess and evaluate kind of our program for not only educational content, but 
looking at environmental justice through that lens and climate science, how do we make sure that we're really continuing to address um, the current trends and the, you know, the best ways to serve our community? So if people are interested in getting involved, please have them reach out to me. You know, not only um, we will take your time, we will take your dollars and we will, you know, just be so thankful for the continued support from our community. Well, it is a very exciting time, I think, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the sea, the Monterey Bay Marine Sanctuary, it's going to reflect, you know, what happens in our climate change that, you know, generally. And, you know, that's where one of some of the most profound impacts will take place. And so you're kind of, uh, you know, on the cutting edge of that and being able to transfer that responsibility of stewardship to young folks who say, you know, this is yours, this is your future, and it's happening right here. Absolutely, right? And we are so lucky to have the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary right here. And as we're getting ready to celebrate the anniversary of our sanctuary, 30th anniversary of the sanctuary, we know that the O'Neill Sea Odyssey was kind of um, dovetailed or followed right behind that. You know, again, we are able to teach, you know, such lessons that we can based on having this environment in our backyard. So we're really thankful right, to be able, to, for those that came before us, to be able to have the foresight to protect and preserve, you know, not only the ocean, but the animals and the plants that make this place home. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, you have a wonderful staff over there. You were mentioning uh, uh, the difficulties or the challenges of kind of pivoting from uh, uh, where we were pre-pandemic, you know, into pandemic and now back out of it. You know, mm -hmm. your staff is certainly very able, you know, and experienced now in being able to do that. Uh, are those still challenges for you to kind of, you know, gauge uh, where we're going to be uh, as a society, socially, as a community, as we move forward? Well, you, you know, the past couple of years have been challenging on a many different levels for the Sea Odyssey. We've, you know, again, I'm new, you know, we've had tra leadership transitions with the organization. We've had challenges here at our office. We've had, we've had staff that we've lost and we continue to kind of persevere throughout it all. Now we're going to say that I see, you know, staffing is a challenge across our whole city at the moment with people right. finding the right workforce. And we're really working to ensure that our staff are um, trained and that they're ready to serve the students. And we're really working to better recruit um, staff that speak Spanish, that are bilingual. We want to make sure that, you know, um, the environmental field is a safe, comfortable place for people of all backgrounds. You know, we don't want it to, we want to try and find a way to support the next generation of environmental stewards looking different than myself, you know, as somebody who has lived in this community a long time, I want to make sure that we leave a program and, you know, create opportunities for people from all walks of life to participate in our program. So we're trying to staff that. We're trying to make sure our program is serving the community in ways that is authentic, you know, and that we're really speaking to the rich history of the Native people that made this place home. And we're really trying to make sure that we're representing you know, the larger voices of our community in our day-to-day -day activities. So yes, staffing is always a challenge and we're trying to find the right people, but we have a great team that work here now and we're looking to expand that. So if you have people that are interested or are maybe wanting to work with the Sea Odyssey, I really encourage them to go to our website. We're always looking for instructors and would really want to work with people in our community to give them the knowledge and the experience to teach out in the field. And it is a wonderful website, and uh, it really it's inspiring uh, to hear your words about uh, the indigenous people, about the sensitivity for that, about uh, what we want in terms of programs that really reflect the community that we are, reflect the community values that we have. And I think these are the very things, really, that programs like O'Neill Sea Odyssey are really sensitive to and really bring to the community. As much as it's great to have 117,000 students moving through a program and having a, the, a catamaran that's a wonderful experience for people. It's as much the feeling of uh, community that you're instilling in people mm -hmm. and the, really the need to kind of protect and steward that mm -hmm. that is absolutely just as important in my mind with the work that you do. And I think it really goes back to your first question. You know, this really works to embody the legacy of Jack O'Neill. 
you know, we really are trying to create a, and honor his legacy of not only innovation, but of access and of just making sure the ocean is taken care of, that this is such a magical place and it really holds the key to so much. So um, we're really thankful and I'm so excited to be here now. So while I've lived in Santa Cruz for 20 years, I now get to work in Santa Cruz and get to make, you know, impacts in this community. And I'm really excited for the opportunity for sure. Well, the community and uh, I'll speak for the community as well as uh, as others. And we're lucky to have you, uh, um, as a, you know, on Nonprofit Spotlight, uh, often when we're doing a, a, a community uh, program, we do speak to the your fellow, uh, your, your colleague, executive directors, and to a one, they are very able and committed and engaged in the community, and that's exactly what we need here in Santa Cruz, and certainly O'Neill Sea Odyssey and we as a community are lucky to have someone like you who has taken the reins of that and, and doing what we need to have done here in the community. Well, I'm thankful for the time you're putting towards highlighting these nonprofits. I think there's so many of us here in town, and we're just, you know, really working to make our community, you know, rich and vibrant and, you know, and I think we're just so fortunate. So thank you for taking a moment to highlight the good work that's happening here for sure. So now, even though this is an evergreen program, and uh, as, as I was saying, we're hoping to get it onto our playlist the next couple of days. Uh, will there be, uh, will, will people out at the harbor be seeing the catamaran um, out into the ocean here uh, uh, very soon? You are. You're going to, if you look out, you know, you'll see the catamaran out right now. Um, the catamaran's available for public and private charters at the moment, but the Sea Odyssey program is going to be kicking back off later in September. Um, once we give our teachers and educators a chance to get the year started, um, we're going to be starting our year up here very shortly. So keep an eye out for us. We'll be starting our program up come mid-September. If you're interested in getting engaged with the O'Neill Sea Odyssey program, check out our website for volunteer opportunities, employment and engagement. Um, and we're always looking for ways for people to get involved. So thank you so much to everyone who has supported the program. Gosh, in all of the, you know, over the past couple of years, we're really thankful for all your help in surviving this. Well, Tracy Weiss, it's been wonderful having you here. Again, welcome uh, to the community. Uh, again, I think we're lucky to have you here. Uh, and best of luck, really, with everything that the O'Neill Sea Odyssey is doing uh, now and in the future for the community. Uh, this is the reason why we have these programs, is to get folks like yourself to be able to talk so passionately about, you know, what we all believe in, and that is, you know, the stewardship, at least as far as this program is concerned, of our National Marine Sanctuary and how important uh, that is, and uh, the opportunity to engage, you know, youth and be able to really, together as a community, protect uh, these really valuable uh, resources. So Tracy, thank you so much. A pleasure talking to you and getting to know you a little bit. Uh, uh, we'll be seeing you hopefully again soon, and maybe I'll come out there and take advantage of your uh, of your uh, very nice offer to, to kind of take a look We would around. love to have you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Please. Absolutely. Come, come Tracy visit. Weiss, Executive Director of Neil Seattle. Thank you again for being here. This has been another program with uh, Nonprofit Spotlight. Tune in again next edition when we're interviewing another person from uh, one of the wonderful nonprofits doing great work in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County. Till then, see you later.